In this tutorial, I would like to demonstrate a very basic multi-threaded program where one thread will pass messages to a second thread. I'm going to accomplish that with the use of a pipe, and a pipe is a unidirectional data channel that is used for interprocess communication. And when you call the pipe function, you need to pass it an integer array that has two elements, and I've defined a global variable up here towards the top called message queue. It, it, it has two elements, and when you pass that to the pipe function, and that pipe is uh, created or opened, it will place the read side of the pipe, a file descriptor for that read side of the pipe, into the first element of the array, and it will place a file descriptor for the writing side of the pipe into the second element of our array. If that uh, returns uh, successfully, then I will go ahead and create our first thread. And I'm using a function called I like to talk. And that will be the function that places all the messages onto the pipe uh, for use by the second thread. And I create that second thread right here. And I'm using a function called I like to listen. And it will wait for information to be written to the pipe and it will start reading from the pipe. And since there isn't anything, anything else for the main function to do, I do have to create a pthread join or, or execute the pthread join on the talking thread because I need to make sure that um, the main function uh, suspends operation so that the talking thread has time to do all of its work and the listening thread has time to do all of its work. So the, the first thing we do is we do a pthread join on the talking thread, since it's the one who's going to be pushing the messages out onto the pipe. Once it's written all the messages to the pipe, you'll see that that function then has nothing left to do and it will just automatically uh, terminate. When that happens, I need to have some sort of signal to the listening thread so it realizes that, uh, hey, stop waiting for information to be placed on the pipe because there isn't going to be any more information placed on the pipe. And when the listening thread gets that information, then it will terminate. But when I issue this close statement on the writing side of the pipe, I still have to give the listening thread time to finish doing all the work that it wants to. So once again, I need to call the pthread join function this time on the listening thread. And once the listening thread has uh, is finished and uh, has terminated, then the uh, main event will, our main function will uh, continue on, which is the last step is to return, and that will be the end of the program. So let's take a look at that first function. I like to talk. There isn't too much going on in here. We're going to put sort of an introduction message out onto the standard output, sort of as a visual clue to let us know that the uh, first thread is running. And then what it will do is it's going to place 25 messages out onto this pipe. And depending on the value of i, it will print, pick one of those three messages uh, to, to write out onto the pipe. And it will uh, put the message onto the pipe by using this write statement. I'm using the second element of the array and it is where the file descriptor of the writing side of the pipe was stored. We will pass it the message that we want to, to write out to the pipe or out to that file descriptor as well as the length of the message. And it will do that for 25 times different messages going out there. And when it's finished it will put one more message out to the standard output uh, to uh, let it know that this function is done and the listening thread is um, terminating. I'm sorry, the talking thread is terminating. The second function is this one here, I like to listen, and it is going to put its own introductory message out to the standard output to let us know that it is running. And the bulk of the work is happening right here with this read statement. The read is a blocking function in this case, where if there is currently no more or no information or no more information on the pipe, it will wait until information is placed out onto the pipe or more information is placed out onto the pipe. Uh, so long as there is information there, it will read back however many characters are out on the pipe 
up to this maximum length. And I've defined max length way up here as uh, 100. I arbitrarily picked 100. It, you can make it 500, whatever, whatever you want it to be, as long as it's greater than zero. And um, so long as there's information on the pipe, then the read will return back with that information having been placed into this variable and message length will be uh, set to the number of uh, characters returned. And when that happens, we will simply, uh, well, one thing we have to do is we have to put a null terminating string or null terminating character at the end of this array so that we can use this as a character string. If we didn't do this, then there would be no way for the fprint to know for sh for sure where exactly the end of the message is. So for character strings, you need to make sure there's this trailing um, or terminating null character placed on it if you're going to use it as a character string like we are here. So it's going to loop and loop until the pipe has been read. And if there's no more information, we'll wait for more information to be put on the pipe. The one exception happens when the main program issues this close statement. So when the close is issued on the writing side of the pipe, then what happens is when the read happens and the pipe has been emptied and there's now no more data on the pipe, it sees that the reading side or the writing side was closed and it will return without having put any information into message, which means it's no longer going to be greater than zero. So that will end the while loop. And then the uh, listening function will have one last say, and that is to put this message out onto the standard output. Then the listening thread will terminate, which will cause the main uh, function to continue on to this step, which is a simple return, and then the program uh, will finish. So let's give that a try by compiling it. And I'm going to be using a standard GCC uh, command for that. Notice that I am using the pthread library since this is a multi-threaded program. Let's go ahead and execute this now. And you see here that the uh, first message that made it out to the standard output was this listener message, which is the one way down here. And um, some might find that curious because the first thread that was created was actually the talking thread. This, the listing thread was the second one created. But uh, the system, um, when it's uh, assigning uh, time slices to these uh, threads, for whatever reason, it went ahead and let the second thread get a chance to do some of the code before the um, the uh, the first thread got to do its message. Um, another interesting thing is, is that sometimes because there's not really much going on in this program, it's very small, that once the talking thread got a chance to put its message out onto the standard output, it also was able to or was given enough time to do all 25 messages or put all 25 messages out onto the pipe and still have enough time to put its closing statement out onto the standard output because you can see that the the introductory or the first statement was was said or placed onto the standard output and then the the talker's second statement was put on the standard output back to back before any messages that were placed into the pipe actually start going out to the standard output, which is happening right in here on this side. So, um, and then finally, the, uh, the listening thread had the last say by putting this message out onto the standard output. But it is possible to run the same program without even recompiling it, just running it again, and it could end up putting the messages in a slightly different order and notice how it just now did that. So in this time that that talker's closing remark happened after the first read, uh, the first reading of the pipe happened and the message was put onto the standard output whereas here it was back to back and in this case it wasn't back to back we actually got or the system had the uh, listening thread 
get a chance to put at least one additional item or one item out onto the standard output before the talking thread uh, was able to continue. And based on the order, it would appear that the uh, listening thread got exactly one message off of the pipe, and then the talking thread got to put the remaining 24 messages onto the pipe before the listening thread got a chance to process all of those. So at any rate, that is, uh, that is it for this uh, tutorial. Thank you for watching.